Next in this video, we are going to see the meshing cycle of one byte, two byte, and three byte instruction. So, what is a meshing cycle? Uh, time required for a particular operation for an instruction to be carried over. Not only that, how many seconds it will take in each second or each microseconds, what or what signals or uh, what signals work together in order to carry over that particular task in a particular microsecond. That is what we are going to see. So here I say it as MUAS, that is microseconds. It depends upon the system, the unit of uh, clock pulse varies. But here 8085, we are going to talk in terms of microseconds. So first let us see this clock pulse. I let me explain this timing diagram. Then we will come to the explanation of the uh, for a particular instruction set, how it works. So here, this is a clock signal. So a clock signal has a lowering edge and a rising edge. So this pulled together called as one clock pulse and so forth. So it is drawn like this. So this we said to be the T state. One T state, two T state, three and four. Okay. Now, these are the address bus. So in address bus, we have, it is specifically mentioned as 0 to A0 to A7 and A8 to A8. You know, A0 to A7 both acts as an address bus as well as the data bus. Whereas here it purely unidirectional. It works only as an address bus. Then ALA, it is address latch enable signal. So when it rises, it means whatever is placed on the total address bus, that is A0 to A50, it acts as an address. Then we have I was slash M bar signal. So what it will do, it says whether it is the information, the given instruction has to be read or write from memory or read or write from IO device. That is what I'm saying. If it goes slow, it indicates that by this, you can identify it by this M bar, which means it works during the M memory reading is done during the low signal. So when it goes slow, it means it is reading or writing from the memory. Then what it has to do, whether reading or writing is done by, uh, mentioned by this RD bar signal. So it is active low. So when it is high, it is not reading, but where anything, but when it goes low, it says that it is reading. So it together, it combines together with this. It says that whether it is reading or writing from memory or from IO device. So there is a only one read signal, but when it combines with this, and depending upon that, it says whether it is reading or writing from the main memory or IO device. Okay, now let me explain this. Uh, uh, steps and timing involved in fetching the instruction. That is, this instruction, 4F. 4F means move the value of accumulated to C. That is the equivalent hex code given in the instruction set. Now, during the first time, let us answer. Now it is stored like this. Like this. Okay, it is stored somewhere in memory at location. Let us uh, let me write it here. Say two zero zero five. The information four F is two. So let us say it is stored here in memory location four F is stored. Now uh, the program counter after two thousand two zero zero four. The memory location, the previous memory location, two zero zero four. After it is executed, now it points to this. Now this address, memory location, because now the next instruction to be executed is two zero zero. Before this also maybe some instruction. After this also instruction. But what we are going to see here is a single instruction and a single byte, one byte instruction. How it gets executed? So what are all the signals get affected? That we are going to explain with the timing diagram. This we call it as a timing diagram because of this clock signal. Okay, so 2005 memory location. Now, what happens? The program counter has this value. This is placed on the address bus. So, this is the higher order and this is the lower order. So, higher order is placed on A8 to A15 and lower order is placed on in the A0 to A7. Now, it acts as an address bus. So, ALE goes high saying that it is latched. Okay. So now, whatever data present in this A0 to A15 is addressed. Then at T1, it remains there so that it will be stabilized. So once it is stabilized, now 
the data has to be read from the memory but how we understand that it is reading because it's a memory location so it has to read so now then after this now ale goes low in uh, near coming to the t2 second when it nearing t2 second saying that now whatever it can uh, the the a0 to a7 now it can access the database so it goes low now i was slash m bar it goes low indicating that it is a memory read because it is reading from memory then rd bar after the first t seconds it goes low indicating that now it has to read the data from the main memory so this for now this signals s not equal to 1 and s1 equal these are all status signals when both are one it indicates that it is a op code fetch we know that for a single byte this itself is the op code this itself is the operand because we have the expand the meaning of this is move c comma a this is the op code and these two are the operand so together you can represent it as four up that is why we say in a single byte both op code and operand are present now it uh, once uh, the it is read it is placed on the database at t2 on t3 so it will be that uh, till uh, t3 then at t4 it raises saying that it has completed the reading because now the data is placed and it is it is established in the uh, database then after the t4 what happens here uh, the fetched data that is 4f h this fetched data is placed on the instruction decoder and the instruction decoder decodes the instruction and whatever is said in the instruction that will be executed it is nothing but move the value the move the value of accumulator here to so move the value of accumulator to the c register that will be completed so this itself is a opcode fetch this is an opcode fetch as well as a memory read both together that is what in a single byte instruction now we'll go to two byte memory read machine cycle so as i have already seen two byte memory location right here two memory location one uh, op code is will be in the first place and in the next memory location the operand will be placed so let us consider an example an instruction mba 32 that means after the execution of the statement 32 is placed in the accumulator so now how it is placed for mba a equivalent is 3e then 32 is placement so let us consider this is a memory location uh, 200 and 2001 in that uh, we have placed this data that is 3e and 32 the equivalent is given here the instruction consists of two byte op code first that is move here mba so uh, okay and then the second 32 a comma 32 h so 88 we first fetch the op code it is nothing but this is the op code so that is the first op code fetch but that itself is a memory read again but anyway we say that as an op code fetch and it consists of four t states any op code fetch right here four t states then secondly again to read the data that is from memory read from this data again the next fetch is taken so totally and it requires two to three states two to three t states now we will see the uh two byte memory read so it is given as first one machine cycle and another machine cycle so the in the first thing the 3e this will be fetch okay so here it is actual 20 here the lower order uh, is placed and then after some ale latches uh, and it is stabilized and when it read it goes low and i o slash m bar it goes low by the time status symbol goes high indicating it is a op code fetch then at t4 what about it goes high indicating reading is over now it the instruction is decoded and the micro processor find that it is not a single byte one more reading has to be done in order to complete the instruction because mva a only has been read so far 32 the data is present in the next memory location now we to understand that after decoding the instruction now it understand it will not execute the instruction because still more data till another uh, memory location has to be read so that uh, it will get the next byte 
then only it can complete the whole cycle that is mba a comma 32 will be over after that only so here that will be interpreted and it initiates the uh, the program counter will be incremented and it initiates the next memory day so 2020 is again placed that is this higher order space and the lower order space in the uh, this a0 to a7 now again address latches goes high saying that this is data present here is address then again i was slash m bar goes low indicating that it is a memory rate and here again now what happens s1 is one status bit one is and s0 is zero saying that it is a memory rate here when both these two are one only it is a output fetch when this is one and this is zero it is a memory read only now what happens after some time t2 when it reads read signal goes low indicating that it has to be read from the memory now 32 h is read and it is placed and then uh, it will be executed so now it needs uh, here four t states and here three t states so together it needs seven t states for execution of this particular uh, that is any two byte instruction now if you calculate the execution time how you will calculate say for example frequent clock frequency is given as 2 megahertz for this 8085 let us consider so for different problem they may give different megahertz based on that you have to calculate so the particular problem what we have taken here is let us consider clock frequency to be 2 megahertz and the t state can be calculated by 1 by f so what is it when say 1 by 2 you have 0 0.5 microseconds so you express 30 state clock one clock period to be in terms of us that is for this particular case then execution time for of course fetch how you will take it takes 40 states so 40 for 1 t state it is 0 0.5 mus means for 40 again multiply 0 0.5 you have 2 mus then for the memory read the next 3 t state 3 to 0 0.5 1 by if you add these two you will get 3.5 or directly 70 into 0 0.5 you get. so this is how you calculate the total execution time of one particular instruction likewise you have to calculate for a one full program and you find you can find out the total execution time now we'll see about a three byte instruction machine cycle here what happened let us take an example sca 8000h this is a memory location and the 16 bit for this 28 bit and for this 16 bit so together 24 bit and it needs three bytes it, is, it needs four machine cycles and 13 t states we'll see why it needs 13 t states the meaning of this uh, this instruction is store the value of accumulator in the memory location a000 now uh, this instruction is stored in this is the place where the accumulator value has to be stored but in main memory you will be storing this coding so 2050 uh, let us imagine at 2050 you have stored the equivalent of st is 32 that is true then 2051 the lower order address then 2052 the 80 is placed now this is how you are storing as i already told you lower order will be uh, placed the first uh, before the higher order now we'll see the machine cycle it needs four machine cycles. We'll see why. Because there are only three bytes, three machine cycle is needed. Why we need a fourth machine cycle? Let me explain. For the first machine cycle, that is, this is a opcode fetch. Okay, opcode equivalent is 32. So already I have explained. I hope there is no need for explanation of this. Three. First, opcode fetch. This is H. And then, so at that time, T2, T3, this 32 is placed. And the respective signals are uh raised or lowered according to whether they are active low or active high but here all are active low because memory read and uh, or the ball signal all are active low then in m2 what will do it will read the lower order zero zero so in the next in program counter is increased and now it places the 20 51 here 20 and 51 here placed and the address slash enable is open now read signal goes low and then this this data from the memory location is placed on the data bus. now memory uh, machine cycle 3 now this is read 18 that is because that is how we are storing isn't it first this is read then this is read and then this is read now that is placed here 
now with this when it sees when it comes to t4 it know that the instruction is not over reading of instruction is not over because two more read has to be done that will be understood by the instruction decoder here then only it initiates two memory read then once it is over so what is the meaning of this store the value of accumulator in this memory location that is so far it has read the instruction now we take execute the instruction say what is the value what is the meaning of this instruction the accumulated value so let us say this is accumulated that value is stored in 800 so here now the address is placed on the address bus so here 00 uh, that is higher order and the lower order is placed here 80 is placed here and here uh, lower order is placed and the data is placed on this now read signal goes low indicating that now it is a memory right so we first this in order to read this instruction it reads from this memory location then execution of that instruction is done it is nothing but the value in the accumulator is stored in that memory location so this is how you have to interpret the timing diagram so when you interpret the timing diagram properly you will be able to understand how each and every instruction is executed